Hey guys, it's Hunt for Games, and it's about that time again for another Final Fantasy XI artifact video, this time with some oddballs, Corsair and one of my personal favorites, Puppet Master. Now I say oddballs because both these jobs were uniquely different from any other job in the game. Core being a strange cross between like a, a DD and a buffer at the same time in a game where that wasn't really a thing. And Pup being one of the most unusual pet jobs ever implemented in any MMO ever that I'm aware of. Seriously, if there's something more unusual than Puppet Master, please let me know what it is because I want to play it. So first, let's jump right into Corsair, and one little note before I do. Corsair is literally my lowest job in Final Fantasy XI. There's nothing that currently beats it. It's tied with Runefencer at level 15. I never even made it through the dunes, and I leveled it back far enough to remember that actually having the dunes party was a real thing, and saying, nope, I can't do it, I can't do these last five levels. Because of the bullets. Bullets! are expensive, and this job feeds in them like Elvon's feed on smugness, but I always, always regretted it, because Corsair is one of the coolest jobs in the game. It combines some of that awesome range damage that I, I love so much. I love ranger. I think it's so cool. And then it, it adds in, like, buffing. Buffing was amazing in Final Fantasy XI. It was practically required to make any progress at all in parties. It, it seemingly offered everything I ever wanted. How the buffs worked was always a bit of a mystery, with Corsairs throwing decks around like they were nothing, doubling down, playing little hands of blackjack over in the corner by themselves, while the rest of us are trying to kill the enemy, but it was so neat. Now with my limited knowledge of awesome gearses for <laughs> ranged users at 50 to 60, some of this is a bit of a guess. I didn't really get super into that gear set, but I doubt many Corsairs are left that can correct me anyway, so they go! First off, before we even start, Corsair gear looks awesome. All of it looks awesome. You're a pirate with guns. I mean, that's cool. That's really cool. So there's no need for me to say like, oh, the, the pants look great, the boots look great. All of it looks great. It looks amazing. What we really need to know is whether or not the stats are worth the amazing looks. The culotte were first, and there's some delicious pants with questionable usefulness. I mean, the minus enmity is always great for anyone shooting mobs in the face with guns, which Corsair is. But frankly, I'm not sure Int is useful at all for Corsair, but I've been wrong before. Maybe one of the abilities used it as like a weird trait modifier, I don't know. But I'm not positive that it was actually used at all. Regardless though, it wasn't helping your damage output, and let's face it, we all love seeing those big numbers with a good weapon skill when we fire one off. So we have to move on, assuming the pants are kind of dumb. Unfortunately, the gloves, the Corsair's Gants, if I'm even pronouncing that right, didn't help in that respect either. Pairing skill and dex on a job that uses agility and kites mobs? I I, I don't even know what to say. That's, they're like totally useless. Let's just move on. Now that that nonsense is out of the way, we at least start to see a glimmer of hope with the boots, offering up both agility and ranged accuracy, making them at least worth a look. At plus two each, they're not winning any awards, but I can't remember what kind of options were available in this, like, slot piece of boots at level 56. Boots could be pretty slim for a lot of jobs, so maybe they were decent. But all is forgiven with this badass code. Agility plus two and ranged accuracy plus eight. Were better options out there? Yeah, probably. Would you wear them? No, because you could look like a pirate. That coat was awesome. And it would sacrifice looking like a pirate for slightly better gear. No one. Nah, that's true. I used to wear freaking Subligar all the time for plus three attack. Luckily, though, even if you did switch it out, you'd probably wear the Tricorn for at least 10 levels. With plus eight ranged accuracy and plus two strength on the head, it was a solid contender against even the optical hat at level 70. On top of that, enhance the accuracy and damage of Quick Draw. Quick Draw utilized cards, one more thing that Corsair had to buy. So anything that could make it slightly more effective, make sure you were getting your money's worth, was worth it to me. But despite how amazing it looked, how great the job seemingly could be, I wasn't the only one who didn't get very far with Corsair. Whether it was the financial investment or something else going on, at, at least for me, it was always rare to see somebody running around with Corsair making them all the more interesting and mysterious. I'm not saying they were like not there at all. I, I partied with plenty and I saw a bunch at 75, but they just seemed less popular than a lot of the other jobs. Most seemed to only hop onto it occasionally for its two hour, <laughs> which was hilariously used to just reset everybody else's two hour, like all the time. But anyways, I'm sure those that loved it, loved it a lot. It's a cool job. But of course there was rare because it was so pricey to play. Puppet Master was rare because no one liked it. It was just a strange job, and as most pet jobs that were in Final Fantasy XI, kind of imbalanced. Usually towards the shittier side of things, it was rare that Puppet Master was too strong for its own good. So no one really wanted them for most endgame events and definitely not for parties, except for a few situations where their strange combination of pet focus and hand-to-hand -hand damage made them surprisingly valuable. Eventually, they did start to shine as updates came out that resolved a lot of the annoying problems, but they were always kind of quirky even at the best of times. On top of their just general viability, they were 
kind of difficult to play. Bouncing between the different elements, gathering and understanding all the attachments, making sure to keep your pet at peak efficiency while not overloading it, while still maintaining your own TP gain and abilities, and just people were just kind of turned away. It's a lot going on. It was easy to screw up even if you understood it and usually didn't do a ton of damage even when you did it right. And just plain old wasn't a lot of fun for a lot of people. Plus, skill ups. Oh my god, the skill ups. That's all I'm gonna say. Just, you're basically skilling up four jobs and you can't enhance the puppet to be better at all. No. Point is, it was an underdog, and an unlike underdog that in theory was a jack of all trades, but really did lean towards the master of none most of the time. So of course, I adored it. I loved this job. I I couldn't stop playing after level 5, and I just couldn't get enough. I took it all the way to level 75, and then 99. It was like my second job to 99. Now we'll say this is a job, like Blue Mage, that truly shines in the pre-level 40 range. Because honestly, most of the abilities, the utility it gets before then, is like super useful for that level range and no other job gets it till later, like way later. Like Blue Mage firing off damaging spells that were like 5 MP, that's insane. But that's only insane until like level 20. <laughs> then it's not as big of a deal. Post level 40, uh, other jobs started to catch up and surpass it, at least back in the 75 area. But I mean early on, Pup is literally capable of Stone Skin, Flash, Provoke, Tanking, Shield Bash, Refresh, Convert, Haste, uh, range damage, self-healing, magic damage, and all this by like level 10. It can do so much and so quickly that other jobs don't get to do till like the 30s. And a lot of this is self-automated by the automaton or only affects the automaton and not you as the user. But seeing that kind of stuff like flying around, people are literally still getting their second weapon skill is just amazing. I, I couldn't get enough. As soon as it happened, I was like, oh my god, this job is so cool. But I'm totally off track. What does this mean for the artifact gear? Usually with uniquely specific pet jobs, the artifact is either like totally amazing and a huge win or totally useless. So which is it for Pup? Well, with a job like Pup that can branch off in so many different directions, the artifact tends to reflect that. The pants start off on the right foot with enhanced cure potency for the automaton. Unfortunately, if you're not using a puppet that heals, they're sort of useless, although they are, they're cool. The boots are a bit more universal with plus three strength for the wearer and enhances a uh, repair effect, which, Anything that made an ability that uses a consumable better was worth it in my mind. I equip these things all the time. They made the repair ability also removed a status effect as well from the automaton, which was amazing, especially if it was like poisoned and dying and you're like, I don't have another call automaton for 20 minutes. Life saving. The gloves were a major swap in, increasing the stat boost for maneuvers, whatever, and reducing the chance of an overload, which is a huge deal. You would equip these things for the rest of your the rest of your Puppet Master life every single time you use a maneuver and you'd like it, you'd be so happy you had them. But in general, for like just general combat, they were totally useless. Luckily, you did do a maneuver like every 15 seconds, so it kind of worked out. The body though was unfortunately just okay, with like 5 accuracy and some increased HP and MP for the automaton. But, Pup was kind of weird. It didn't have access to like most gear sets that mainly jobs would get. So I mean, this thing wasn't really all that bad. No Scorpion Artist, no Harbergen. You couldn't even wear that little 55 thing that came with Otter Gone. So when you got this thing, you're like, five accuracy, thank God a piece of gear that Puppet Master can wear that is useful. Pup got a ton of mage gear, but no mage skills. <laughs> it was a weird job, it was such a weird job. I loved it, oh my God, I loved it so much. That little head covering thing go, the, the Taj, a little less exciting. I mean, dex plus three and MP and HP recovered by automaton while healing is all right. But if you had the Empress hairpin, it was already way better. This thing wasn't exactly an improvement. And if you didn't, you'd be wearing the optal hat in uh, 10 levels regardless. So it, it just wasn't that exciting. It was all right. It wasn't really that special. But anyways, that's all I've got for Corsair and Pup though. Uh, let me know what you thought of these two sets and about these jobs in general, especially at the level 75 era. But I want to hear more about what they're doing at 99 too. I have no idea what Corsair is up to. I like never see a Corsair, but I've heard Pop can do some crazy tank and stuff, so we'll see. My guard is very low. My guard skill is incredibly low. But talk about Pop so it does make me want to check it out again. Like I said, it was like my first to second job to 99. I, I just love how the job worked. It was so neat. Hope everyone's enjoying the 15th anniversary campaign. I hope it's still going on. I kind of lost track of dates and when it ends, but if it hasn't ended, uh, please go check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week, and uh, thanks for watching. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week, and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you'll like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya!